Hello, it is you and me talking again. Well, it's me talking to you. And by you, I mean those that enjoy my stuff. And right now I'm going to just spill it when it comes to online dating. In fact, I am gonna read for you what it is that I wrote most recently because I started initiating the intentionality of being open to a partner in 2021 and I did it on a date that I consider auspicious and that would be the winter solstice of 2021. So I'm interested in meeting somebody in 2022 because significantly for me, it's the year of the water tiger, which only happens every 60 years. And I'm a water tiger in the Chinese astrology, even though I'm not 60 yet, it's just the way it, it sits on the calendar, you know, because the Chinese astrology begins on February 1st and my um, birthday is in January. So I know what I am. <laughs> I'm a water tiger. And so it is empowering for me, but I also, I do have challenges. It's not like being given things. You're not given things just for existing because the reason you're existing is to create. And if you were just given things, you wouldn't have the ability to create. Right? You wouldn't exercise that ability, would you? Nope. <laughs> So I've recently discovered that we create in our lives both suffering and uh, success. And so um, they say suffering is optional. And I can say I've had my share of suffering. And if you said that to me, I think I would have been very angry and told you to go fuck yourself. But it's true. Now that I've been through it, but when people are in the emotional um, uh, fog, they can't see. And you have to lift yourself out of it. And there are techniques. And I think the number one technique that I learned is clearing the solar plexus chakra of all negativity, past, present, and future. And I haven't created this recording, but all you have to do is go to Crow, um, written with two R's, 777radio.com, and look for Fortune St. Germain, and he teaches spiritual and physical alchemy. Yeah, so I started clearing out the solar plexus, and lo and behold, um, I started healing, but fast, so I have to support the body, um, and I'm learning how to do that. <sighs> I have right now a gum issue right in my, in, my, in my jawbone here. And you can't see it, uh, but it's got um, a swollen infection. It's a root abscess. But no, I'm not going to the dentist and I'm not telling you not to do so if that happens to you. I'm looking at the German new medicine meaning behind that. And this is my experiment. And I also follow the advice of Amanda Vollmer, whose website is yummydoctor.com or something like it. She's the one and only Amanda, spelled with an H, Vollmer. V-O-L-L-M-E-R, I believe. Anyway, um, Yummy Doctor uh, is her tag and her website. And she sells DMSO and a book called Healing with DMSO. And if you get that book, you'll find the recipe that I am using. And I um, am not holding her accountable for giving me this information should things go in a different direction because she states in her book she's not um, providing medical instruction. It's like, this is how I've done it, okay? So people, can choose what they will with their lives and their bodies. And that's why it's a free will universe. I choose what I will, you choose what you will. You would run to the dentist and have it looked at. I will take care of it myself. 
I've done that with legal matters. Rather than spending thousands of dollars, all you have to do is study law and the procedure. I have, I've gotten myself out of two legal situations by knowing how to respond without being afraid. By simply countering, not and, uh, but that, that's not what this is about. I can talk about legal stuff another time. I'm a trained paralegal in training, not a true paralegal. Um, I, had, I had it in college before I got knocked up and became a mother and moved away from one state to, to North Carolina, but that's another story. <laughs> we'll, we'll go into that another time. Um, it's mainly, I was going to read you my match. Uh, okay, because I'm now seeding. Now, okay, I'm seeding, S-E-E-D-I-N-G, the future because I put my intentionality that I am ready for a healthy partner into the... Um, web the World Wide web to see what I could catch because you can use this intelligence and algorithm in your favor so I I, I um, for instance on this dating app I wrote a profile and it got me where I am now and I rewrote the profile because I think it's important to um, start off with a, the seed, and I'm gonna keep a little track record of all this. And so this is the old profile, and it's the one dated, and I'm just gonna do this for myself, I'm doing, I'm typing it. And that's the, um, December, I think it was the 20th that I started in 2021. <laughs> Which would have been a 12202021, numerologically wise. Which is really cool. <laughs> I laugh because I was going to say something about numerology in my profile page uh, for this new um, profile summary that I did for myself for the app. But I thought, you know, introducing tantric sex was shocking enough. <laughs> I was not going to go straight into numerology. All right. So this is what I wrote, okay? I have gum in my mouth because it's... um. Xylitol gum, and it's antibacterial, so it helps if I chew on it. I'm not, that's not medical advice, but it works for me. Okay, you ready for this? <laughs> Here. I don't like that as well as the other hair do, but we're gonna talk through it. Okay, you ready? 2022, I've decided, is the year I meet someone to love who loves me the way I love to be loved. Is that asking too much? No, not at all. It's what every human desires. If it doesn't happen this year, at the very least, I have stated my intention. I have put it out there. <laughs> it will happen eventually because I wanted to. Patience is a new skill of mine that took a lifetime to achieve. Everything in its own divine timing. In the meantime, I've come up with a unique approach to online dating. And it's called gamification. Here's how it goes. <laughs> Not unlike Super Mario Brothers, in which saving the princess is one possible outcome. My future. Someone has to find me. I think I'm a root. My future, honey. But, right, okay has to find me, that's the game. The core experience of, <clears throat> I need water. <laughs> Just hold that thought. So if it's the gamification of online dating, it's not unlike Super Mario Brothers. Think about that. <laughs> hold on, I gotta go get some water before I, I'm parched. <laughs> Do, 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 do. This is really nice lighting. Do you see how much lighting can affect the way a person looks? You know, I've got lines and wrinkles, but you can't see them with this natural filter, can you? No. But you know, I hate to scare people when they see me in real life. 
kind of like celebrities. You don't think celebrities have any pores and then you see them in real life and then you're like, oh my God, what happened to them? <laughs> you kitty. I, I was very giving to that cat yesterday. He was just too demanding and he wore me out. I was feeding him constantly. And then I found a big, huge upchuck thing in, in the cat room. So I decided I, had, I fed him too much. So to, whenever he meowed at me because he's diabetic and I was told to feed him whenever he asked to, he asked me constantly. Kind of like my boyfriend, the ex. Insatiable. He'd go from one thing to the next to the next. <laughs> I was like, you're addicted to everything, including sex. And I feel like an object. Oh my God, I am one. Woohoo! So, the, so this is what else I wrote. <laughs> the objectification of my body wouldn't have been so bad if he delivered something. Initially, it was really good sex. And then he got really unhealthy because during the lockdown, he just, I think he drank himself into um, brain damage. I almost did because um, the environment was such that I realized I was spiraling the drain further and further and further of what I have the capability of being and doing. I mean, why would I want to spiral into the cesspit of hell? And that's what earth is. Earth is the potential for heaven. Did you know it's, it's a torus field that goes up, 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 up? And the more you get your SHIT together, the further you go up. No one's gonna give it to you. You actually have to spiral up yourself. You have to upgrade. You have to do what's called up-leveling. <laughs> so that's what I'm calling this match game, matchmaking game. I'm calling it, I'm up-leveling. And this is game on. So not unlike, <laughs> you with me so far? This is good, I know. <laughs> mm. All right. Excuse the gum. All right, not unlike Super Mario Brothers, in which saving the princess is one possible outcome, my future someone has to find me. He has to find me. That's the game. The core experience of Super Mario Brothers is to make the player feel like they are exploring and conquering a strange world. We are. On this platform, we get baseball cards of matches and check out their stats. After looking through a profile's photos and written summary, the unspoken question is, how messed up is this person? There, I said it. It's not in the back of my mind. It's in the very front, cold, hard fact. Human animals are designed to be social and in relationship. A loving bond between two individuals is life enhancing. With physical loving, the energetic exchange strengthens the auric field and the body. Conversely, a toxic bond is life depleting. As Megan Trainer sings, you know, it's all about the base. <laughs> Without being a reference to Maslow's hierarchy of needs, um, which I think is arguable, sex, if treated as a base need, is base. It's not good. It's low vibe. It's limited in its capacity, capacity to regenerate the body. Enough said. Sex being used as a weapon against humanity. Mm -hmm. Over-sexualized people. It's debased and degraded, and you never learned to get any higher. So anyway, I'm more, I said more, though. Um, I just, you know, talking to you about my thoughts on it, uh, because it helps me, too. I, I look at my, my videos over and over again um, before I decide to publish them, because, you know, once it's put out there, it's put out there. Anyway, um, <clears throat> Maslow's hierarchy of needs, you know, as an aside, uh, talks about sex as being one of the base, base needs. This is what you need. Well, what's the definition of sex? 
If it's sexuality, then that's one thing, but having sex is another. Because for me, if you're having sex, like I was having sex with my ex, it was base and vulgar. Whereas uh, in the past, he had the capacity, or I thought he did, to reach me on a higher level. But um, I actually now recognize that as my own self that I projected. So I took my, my best self and projected it onto him. It was me. I'm the fabulous lover because I am an energy being and I circulate the energy and it's like I'm both in the energy into the like, ah, but I, there's this energy thing going on and then the PC pump and you know, if you're just fucking, then you're, it's base. It's base. It's no good. Anyway, um, where was I? <laughs> He's making trainers things all about the base. <laughs> Basically sex, high sex gives you the ability to regenerate, low sex degenerates. The proof is in the people. But to have a loving bond bet between two people takes two healthy people. There's no mystery there. <laughs> universe, oh universe. I desire a person with a Y chromosome who is self-actualized and a good lover. Godspeed to he who explores and conquers. And that's in reference to the game, Super Mario Brothers, which exploring and conquering any strange world is the experience. <laughs> I go on. Currently, I am happy in my own company and getting to know myself again. As a solo X chromosome bearing individual, I can honestly say life is good. Confidently, I am meeting my challenges and enjoying my new life as an autonomous person. The reason why I'm not saying woman is because um, on this particular app, you get nicked for hate speech and they don't upload your, your um, profile. It gets thumbs down and, and, and yanked. <laughs> they tell you to rewrite it. So that's why I'm saying X chromosome, Y chromosome person. No shit, that's the way it is now. <laughs> Millionaires become offended by my profanity. Billionaires get me. So anyway, um, currently I'm happy in my own company and getting to know myself again as a solo X chromosome bearing individual. I can honestly say life is good. Confidently, I'm meeting, we read that. Oh, this is where it is. I said, I'm meeting my challenges and enjoy, enjoying life as an autonomous person. <laughs> That's where I got off. Honestly, I am happier now than w when I was in an unfavorable relationship. So much so that there's no way I will waste my time, my precious time, with another unevolved person. I wish I could have said man, but I had to say person to be PC. <laughs> Hate speech, what a joke. I, um, I think it's a stupid name because hate is the opposite of love. <laughs> Indifference, if you really don't like somebody, you're indifferent. Uh -huh. So I'm going to use indifferent speech. So when I read to you, I'm going to actually change person to man or woman. I'd like this. A male partner <laughs> who stands up for me in my absence, who trusts and confides in me, who respects me, and someone who supports me emotionally. Of course, it goes both ways. And I, do, and I do likewise, of course. Ideally, my partner has family and good friends, and ideally my partner likes what I like for the most part. It's all about the discovery process. Let's get cooking. <laughs> and I said a bunch of stuff uh, about numerology, I think. Um, 
I don't have the full one here, the real one. I ended up uh, uploading it and then editing it online. So I'll have to cut and paste and update this one. But, you know, I think I've come a long way from, you know, talking about myself in the sense of having come from um, dysfunction and trauma. And I talked about that to come clear with it myself and to have conversations. And I had a really healing conversation. What kind of conversation? It was text messaging with little bubbles, you know, his and hers go back and forth. Um, I'm not gonna meet anybody because I'm very, very empathetic. And I'll feel sorry for them, like they're a dog that's a stray. You know, the, you know those, those, those women who like see every dog and they wanna adopt it? I feel like that with broken men. That's my natural nurturing thing. But now I know better. That is so defeating for me. So now that I've gone through three of those guys, um, I'm ready to have a good life because suffering is optional. <laughs> I'm done with the suffering part. So I started off talking about what I was like, you know, um, holistic, intelligent, insightful, um, about how I like music and hiking, companionship, and I want to go places with people, a partner. I want a man to take me camping with him or on a journey, because I, I, I go on journeys I'm going on a journey to Southport and I'll take you with me. We're gonna have a lot of fun. Um, let's see, and I said something about the narcissist, I have a, yeah, the history of narcissistic abuse. That, that would, you know, basically I got down to it that um, I healed myself enough to recognize now that I was in a, pro I was programmed into accepting the unacceptable based on my desire to keep trying to be perfect enough to not warrant criticism. Yeah, I wanted to be perfect. So I wouldn't be, I wouldn't warrant criticism. And so then when I realized I couldn't be perfect enough for a narcissist, then I recognized I had to learn how to deal with them to stay sane. And then once I got the ability to stay sane and still like who I was, because they really do a number on your self-value, I was like, wow. <laughs> I just hit big time. I just hit the big time. I just won the trifecta. I've had three of these gold, these golden boys, not, not golden at all. I've, I've had three of these victims that then hurt their abusers because they were abused. And they're split. They have a split personality. So they have, they have no idea. And they think you're attacking them constantly. So when you say, listen, honey, I thought we buried the hatchet over that. I thought we already talked about this issue and that we had come to a mutual, mutually agreed upon resolution. So why are we talking about it again? And then eventually you're like, I'm not going to have another endless loop hour discussion that goes nowhere. And then it goes from, huh? And then it goes to, you feel that way, huh? Well, there's nothing I can do about that. <laughs> Indifference. Because <laughs> they're always into it, like these, these narcissistic types they, their feelings are facts. They think that they feel a certain way. You did it to them and it's your responsibility to make it go away and you can't. So once I got to that place, I was like, huh, I bet there's more to life than this. And so now I'm really happy about being single and I'm really good in bed. And so I'm looking forward to having a fucking good time in the future. But you know, now I know what's good. You know, I know what it's like. I know that if a man can't kiss you, or if you don't like anything about his kisses, let's say I had one lover. This is why I know it for a fact. Somebody argued with me about this online underneath one of my videos. They're like, oh no, they could be a bad kisser, but they could fuck really well. And I'm like, well, it depends upon your standards, buddy.
Couldn't kiss but could fuck well? I know no man, no man that could do that. You have low standards, chicky babe, whomever you are. <laughs> no, I'm not even gonna tell you about what I experienced because it's behind me now, it's way behind. Way, way, way behind. <laughs> and his memory is awful. But I'm telling you, I know this for a fact. If he can't kiss the, you the way you like it, and you tell him, don't bite my lip. Or if he touches your body in a way you don't like it, and I'm telling him, don't stick your hands into my pants while I'm kissing you. You know how much money I paid for these things? What are you doing? Stick in your, pant, your hands in my designer pants. Put your, it's like, buy me a pair of pants that you, can, that you want to stick your hands in, asshole. I, I look, a wee little anger just came out just then. A little frustration, actually. When a man cannot verbally listen to direction, he's a rescue that is unrescuable. Euthanize him if you were a dog. Get rid of him. Get rid of him. Send him back out. Mm. It's the woman who holds the Shakti. You know what they're doing in our culture nowadays? They're making women in fear in insecure. The stats are that women over 50 are have a one in 1,000 chance of finding a partner. And I'm like, <laughs> I don't know if that's a stat. I just pulled that out of my top of my head, the side actually right here, the temple. Uh, but uh, I'm thinking the truth is a woman is happier, autonomous, not single. Because if I didn't have a supportive family and if I had had a be some money, I would have been very desperate and may have wanted to partner off just to have a marriage and security. You know, in other words, um, <laughs> Homelessness would not have been a threat. <laughs> so in my situation, I am autonomous, but there are some women who have a really shitty time being single. It's very financially difficult. But let's not go there. That's not what I'm talking about here. I'm talking about me. <laughs> in this case, um, I'm recognizing the value that I bring to relationship because I can reflect back at all of the value I brought to those men. And I know, and they know the truth about how, when I divorced them, they were left with wealth. And I know because of what I decided to do as a being recognizing reincarnation is potential and I did not want to have to go through the karmic debt paying, I chose to write off what I legally had coming to me and perhaps foolishly so, but it's my experiment. I'm following the higher path, the one in which my heart and higher frequencies say to focus on the material world is to deny the manifestation abilities that you possibly have as an alchemist in the physical by focusing on the spiritual, the upper chakras, the heart, the throat, the third eye, the crown, and receiving that information and circulating it through the transformer. So for me to go higher in my lifetime, I either have to be single autonomously or with a balanced male partner. So I hold the power because on this planet, being a single female autonomously is actually a female. This one in particular, I have been giving myself the most wonderful nurturing time planning and taking little vacations and road trips, you know, um, 
done, you know, li lim limited uh, eating so that, you know, every now and then I'll do food fasting. I don't have to feed a partner. I don't have to worry about them being hangry. It's wonderful. <sighs> Worrying about feeding these animals. <laughs> I experienced all three of my partners would get hangry at me for, when they were angry. And I'd be like, don't be angry at me just because you're hungry. And I got to like making sure I had snacks so that I could give it to them. What's your favorite snack? Nuts? I'll give you nuts. You're driving me nuts. <laughs> oh. <laughs> so I'm so much happier without one right now. Because I've had three tough cookies. They were always crumbling over something. I mean, like, those cookies were constantly crumbling. So it was really fun for me as a female to not be bothered with them. But I really want one, a healthy one, you know? A healthy man with a strong body and back and a heart. A man comfortable in his masculinity, in fact, at home, completely in it, thusly allowing me to be my, my divine feminine self. I mean, you need to be a man, <sighs> not a soy boy. You know, I'm a girly girl, but I'm not overly um, commercialized either. So for me, it's not about the the high heels and the, and the look, but I, I can do it. I know how to put that look on. I mean, for goodness sake, if you've read my profile, you'll know that I'm a, a author working on draft three. <laughs> I hope this is the last draft of my, of my book, Lay Girls. Uh, and Daddy Jack's Blue Note, in which I was a dancer, um, strip tease for four and a half, five years. So I know how to put it on. <laughs> but I don't want to lead with that. Because if I'm leading with my sexuality, what am I going to have? <sighs> the stuff I had before, you know? So I'm thinking that now that I'm not so like in your face sexual looking, because I couldn't hide my sexuality, Maybe now I'll get a man who loves me for my heart. But more importantly, now I value myself so much more than my sex. I've put it high in priority to only share my body with a balanced man and a superior one at that. So, okay, what happened to this guy that I was like, remember I told you about this guy? Uh, I, I, if I didn't, I'll release it. But anyway, long story short, um, there was a potential guy on the um, the app that I was like, oh, this guy's kind of, you know, cute. And he was flirting with me. He asked me what my passions were. And I, and I said, oh gosh, honestly, that question alone made my cheeks flush pink. And I got flutters, <laughs> I did. And uh, I said uh, that, and he said something more about passion. And he said, when I use that word passion, my mind goes elsewhere. And I thought, hmm, this guy's flirting. Should I tell him? Should I say, oh my, we're flirting? So he was very responsive. He said things like, you've caught my attention. Mm. And he was cute, but he was only 5'8". And he was a golfer and he liked watching sports. And I'm like, I bet you he's a professional golfer or he's semi-pro because his pictures were golfers and he won a plaque with a handicap. Otherwise he wouldn't have won, but his handicap won. So I go, okay, he's in a... In a league of some kind. I don't know if he makes any money, but he's into golf and I, I'm okay with golfing. I, I think golf courses are pretty. I've been to golf courses. I've been to, you know, low rate go golf courses, um, good ones. And I've been to Baldhead Island golf course and it's really beautiful. 
Yeah, it's really nice to drive around the, on the golf course in the buggy, watching the men hit the ball. I'm, I don't play. My friend Kim does. I'm not opposed to it, but I just, I'm not from a family that ever learned golf. I'm from the lower middle class, okay? <laughs> Our thing was swimming and sports and dance. Like my friend Kim can ski and golf, but she can't move her hips like I can. She told me, she's like, I cannot dance like you. I can't move my hips like that, she said. <laughs> I'm like, I can't ski like you. And I certainly can't <laughs> put on the razzmatazz like you do. Oh, my friend Kim, she, she really knows how to uh, dress. And I thought, well, am I supposed to do that? Should I put on more plumage? I go, no. I'm not trying to attract the man physically. I'm attracting the man spiritually by tuning into my spirit and getting to know me. So more on that, that's the focus. And so coming up on the, on the spring equinox of... Um, Um, 2022, which I believe is March 20, 20th. Yeah, March 20th. I think it's a Sunday. Um, create intentionality and um, recognize it as seeding is a good time if you haven't to physically seed. But also, like make a garden, make a baby, <laughs> make a new project. Uh, and then psychically seed. I like put it out into the future, the intentionalities of the heaven on earth you'd like to experience. And then put your attention there. And remember, um, it's ridiculous to call hate speech, hate speech, when hate is the opposite of love. Yeah. And so therefore, you know, I don't hate what's going on in the world. I'm indifferent to it right now. I have to be to heal myself. And in the healing of myself, I plug that into this, the energetic of the planet, the grid. That's all, just a little thing like that. So as a female, Maintaining my happiness and what I'm doing is more important to me than sacrificing my life for a rescue man. <laughs> so God speed to the man who deserves me and I him, for we will serve each other in blessing God and Goddess. For our lives here are, are actually expressions of our creators in which we create in love, bliss, and joy. And that's the way it is.